All right, here are 10 Excel job interview questions and their answers. The first question is, can you write a note on cell C5 saying the amount is not correct? To do this, you simply have to go to the cell C5. Here is cell C5 and press shift plus F2. This box will open up here and here you can write the note. The amount is not correct and you are done. The second question is, can you find the duplicate values from this list and highlight them? To do this, you can simply use conditional formatting. Here you can see the conditional formatting options on the home tab. Click here and go to duplicate values. Click on this and the duplicate values will be highlighted and you are done. You are given a list of names in an Excel job interview and your task is to write Mr. before each of these names within one minute. You started by writing Mr. like this. Unfortunately, you are unable to complete this task within one minute, which could be an issue for you to get the job, of course. To avoid this, let me tell you a quick way to write Mr. before these names. First of all, you have to write is equal to semicolon, Mr. full stop, semicolon, and uh, uh, and sign and select the first cell. Press enter and drag the cell down. Mr. will be written before all of these names. The word can be anything. You only have to change the word here and any word you write will be applied here. For example, if you want to write Sir before these names, you only have to write Sir here and all the other settings will remain the same and Sir will be written. Let's suppose you are sitting in an Excel job interview and the interviewer asks you to do some practical things to know if you are truly an expert in Excel or just faking it. He asks you to create a drop down list for these country names and you are lost. Now, that would be a real stressful situation. To stay away from such situations, you have to watch this video. First of all, you have to go to the data tab and here you can see the data validation option. Or you can use the shortcut key to go to this data validation option. Press Alt, A and V, V and this will be opened. And here select the list option, then click on the source box to select the source of the data. Choose these country names, press OK and press enter. And yeah, the drop down list will be created here. I recently went to a practical job interview where they asked me to separate the day, month and year name from this list. They said to complete this task only in two minutes. Instead of manually entering the information which would have taken me more than 10 minutes and likely resulted in failure, I used a super quick method. Let me explain that. I selected this column and filled this to the right columns with the same data. Then I pressed Ctrl plus 1, went to the custom tab and entered D four times. Click OK and whoa, the day names were filled successfully. Next, I repeated the process for the month column. I selected it, pressed Ctrl plus 1, chose the custom option and enter M four times. Press OK and here the month names were filled accordingly. Finally, I selected the year column, pressed Ctrl plus 1 and enter Y four times here. This completed the year names. The manager was very impressed and I was offered the job on the spot. Me and my friend went to an Excel job interview. The interviewer asked my friend to fill in all the subject marks of students and then total them here. He said that this task should be completed within just one minute. My friend started filling in numbers manually like this, which consumed a lot of time and unfortunately he failed the interview. But I did this. First of all, I selected all these cells and used the rand between formula, specifying the bottom and top numbers I want to add here. Then I press enter. After that, I press Ctrl plus D and then Ctrl plus R to quickly populate the cells with numbers. Next, I went to the cell and press Alt and is equal to to sum up these marks. I dragged this number down and all of the cells were automatically filled. The interviewer was impressed and I got the job. A question was asked in an Excel job interview. If you have some data in an Excel sheet and you want to hide some of the data and copy the rest of the data and paste it elsewhere, how do you do it? So let's look at an example of this. Let's say I have to hide the list of veggies and fruits from this data and copy the rest of the data. First of all, I'll hide these two columns. I have to select these and press Ctrl plus zero. After that, if I select this data, copy it and paste it here, 
you will see that the entire data is being pasted here. Okay, now let's see how to do it. I'll hide these two columns and after hiding, I'll select the rest of the data and press Alt plus semicolon. And after that, I'll copy this and paste it here. And now you can see that only two columns are pasted here. There is another way to do this. Let me show you that as well. For that, let's hide this data again, select the rest of the data and press Ctrl and G. And then click on special. Here I'll click visible cells only and press OK. And then copy it and paste it here and it will be pasted. No need to panic if the interviewer asks you to convert this data vertically aligned to horizontal form. The data could consist of hundreds of columns. You can't even think to do it manually. If you are thinking to do it manually like this, just drop the idea. I have got your back. First of all, you have to select your data and then copy it and click here in the blue cell. After that, go to this paste option and click on paste special. You will see a transpose option here. It's unchecked. You have to check this and press enter. And yes, you have converted this pile of data into horizontal form in less than a minute. Thanks me later. How to protect a workbook? Let's see how. I have a file named protected document. Now I'll try to protect this workbook. So you can see here I'll go to this review tab and you see there's an option as protect workbook. And there's also this option that says protect sheet. So you can protect only a sheet or an entire workbook. I'm gonna protect this entire workbook. This feature is used to protect your workbook. Like sometimes you are sharing your workbook with your colleagues, but you don't want them to make any changes to that. So protected workbook keeps others from making structural changes to your workbook, such as moving, deleting, or adding sheets. If I use this option, no person can add, delete, or you can say rename a sheet. I'll click on this protect workbook and I can put a password. You see, it's protecting the structure of the workbook. So I'll put it as 123 and enter 123 again to confirm. What exactly has happened is if I right click on this sheet, let's say I click on this protected sheet, you can see that all these options insert, delete, rename, move or copy and the other options are also protected. So you can't change or you can't play with that sheet, right? Now similarly, if you see here, there's a plus button for adding a sheet, which is disabled now. Now what I will do is I'll just unlock this or let's say unprotect the sheet. One, two, three, enter. And now if I right click on the sheet that is protected sheet, you can see the options are enabled again. So this way, if you use protect workbook, you are protecting your structure of the sheet in which no person can add new worksheet, insert, delete or rename. So I hope you understood how to protect the workbook. You are given a set of data and asked to create a pivot table in an Excel job interview, but you have no idea because you didn't pay attention to your college classes. Sounds horrific, right? Well, that's why I'm here to make you understand the pivot table with the easiest examples. A pivot table is a tool in Excel that allows you to quickly summarize data in your spreadsheet. To illustrate how to create a pivot table, let's look at a simple example. Here we have a table of data containing order information. Let's use a pivot table to summarize this information and display the total quantity for each order. To get started, highlight the cell where you would like to create the pivot table. In this example, I have selected cell A1 on sheet 2. Next, select the insert tape from the toolbar at the top of the screen. In the tables group, click on the pivot table button. A window called create pivot table should appear. Select the range of data for the pivot table. In this example, I'll select cell A1 to F14 in sheet 1. This will be the source of data for our pivot table. Now, click on the OK button. A blank pivot table should now appear on sheet 2 of your spreadsheet. Next, we will choose the fields to add to the pivot table. To add order ID and quantity, select the checkboxes next to these fields. By default, these fields are added to the pivot table as summed values. Since we would rather see each order ID individually as a row in our pivot table, we will drag sum of order ID from the value section to the row section. Now each order ID is displayed as a row in the pivot table. However, Excel has defaulted the title in cell A1 to say row labels. Let's change the title to something more meaningful such as order ID. Our pivot table now shows all of the order information summarized. We can see the order ID values displayed in row with the total quantity for each order. 
This completes the interview question and our example of how to create a pivot table in Excel. So the question is, what's the difference between relative and absolute cell references in Excel? So in Excel, a relative cell reference adjusts its address based on the position where the formula is copied or moved. On the other hand, an absolute cell reference does not change when the formula is copied or moved. Okay, let's understand this by looking at a simple example. If you have this data, and let's create a simple formula, multiplying cell A4 and B4. Hover over the fill handle and pull it down. So because we pulled the formula down, the formula also changed to A5 and B5. We can also do the same with columns like this. Writing formula, and when you pull a formula from one column to another column, the column changes. But there may be instances where you don't want Excel to do that. Let's say we have this set of data and we have to multiply the quantity every time with the same price and here we have our price. And if I try to multiply the quantity by the price up here, I'll write is equal to select this cell and then I'll select this price and press enter. And if I pull it down, see that it's showing nothing but some kind of errors. And we always have to reference to keep the cell reference the same. So to log this and make the cell absolute reference, you have to add a dollar sign in the formula. Let me show you that. Write is equal to and select the cell and then this. And then you have to press F4 on your keyboard or write the dollar sign manually. But uh, pressing F4 is always an handy option. So I do that. Okay. Now press enter. And if I pull this down, you see that the formula has this dollar sign and cell B2 is multiplying with these cells. And now all the formulas are referencing cell B2. So this is called an absolute cell reference. Okay, I hope that was super easy to understand and now you know the difference between a relative and an absolute cell reference. I'll be back with another commonly asked Excel job interview question. So subscribe to our channel and be a part of the Achieve More fam.